there's just this whole focus on the dogs that Seattle has. Yeah. And it's a special community that way. Um, we do have an NFL team that does, a, you know, is awesome. Uh, Major League Baseball team and, you know, now hockey's mm -hmm. doing well as well. But, um, man, the dogs is what yeah. this place is all about. The big news right now has been obviously the move to the Big Ten. Um, I'm a Big Ten guy. I'm from the East Coast, so I'm yep. excited about it. I, I think it's a perfect fit. I think it's great for the conference and, and great for the school and just for West Coast football. What were your first thoughts when you were told by whoever it was from that, that the move was officially happening? There comes a point where we had to do what we had to do to um, gain some stability, um, mm -hmm. give ourselves some direction. Uh, there was just a lot of questions also, not just from a financial standpoint that you were concerned about, but recruits asking, you know, what's what, going what's, what's to happen here? <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do? And last year, I think we got through November because we focused only on that day, that week, yeah. you know, that game. We didn't get caught up in week two or week three or week four. Yeah. And that's the way it's going to be this year, too. I mean, our I November is, yeah. is tough, but, you know, November ain't going to matter if we don't take care of <laughs> September. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Next Up Podcast. I'm Adam Brenneman. As you can see, we are on campus at University of Washington today. Look at the scenery. Practice behind us. This place is intense. It's electric. It's hot, I'll tell you that. It is definitely hot, but my first time in Seattle, I am absolutely loving it. This place will rival any facility in the Big Ten. Got a lot of content coming from this trip, but right now, on this episode, we have a special podcast interview with head coach at University of Washington, Kalen DeBoer. The job he's done building this program in a short amount of time to a top 10 program in college football. I think they have a chance to win the national championship this year, have a chance to win the Pac-12 in the last year of the Pac-12 as we know it. And then they're moving to the Big Ten. So we're gonna talk about all of it. Coach Sabor is the man. You guys are gonna love hearing from him. Let's go talk to Coach. Before we get back to the podcast, I gotta tell you all about our newest sponsor of the Next Up Podcast, Modern Mammals. You guys know I only wanna promote and allow things to sponsor the podcast that I actually use. That's why I'm so fired up for Modern Mammals to be sponsoring the pod. Here's a story. About a year ago, I started noticing my hair was, wasn't feeling great, felt dry, just didn't feel super healthy. I did a bunch of research around what I was using and putting in my hair with shampoo and realized what I was using was terrible for my hair. Shampoo is not good for your hair. That's when I came across Modern Mammals. It's a replacement for shampoo. So you can wash your hair, clean out all the oils without damaging your hair like shampoo does. I now use Modern Mammals every day. After I work out, use Modern Mammals in the shower. No more shampoo, completely cut out of my life. And my hair has never felt healthier or looked better. At least that's what my mom and grandma told me. So it's time you get rid of shampoo and go to modernmammals.com. Use my promo code Adam B for free shipping at checkout. Get yourself some Modern Mammals today and get your hair healthier than it's ever been before. Modernmammals.com, promo code Adam B at checkout for free shipping. And guys, supporting my sponsor supports the podcast, supports me, allows me to keep doing this. So please go support Modern Mammals at modernmammals.com, promo code Adam B. Before we get to the pod, I want to tell you all about our Athletic Greens. And let me tell you, when I found out about this sponsor, I was fired up because I've been using Athletic Greens for years and I want to promote to you guys the things I actually use. I love Athletic Greens. As a former Division I athlete, I've tried countless supplements and recently my nutrition and my health has become a bigger deal for me as I get farther away from my playing career. And let me tell you, Athletic Greens is the real deal, has me feeling healthy and energized every single day. With as much as I'm on the road, traveling, shooting podcasts, it's hard to have a healthy diet, hard to have healthy nutrition, hard for me to get my my vitamins and minerals every single day. My doctor even told me that last time I saw him. But with Athletic Greens, I get 75 plus vitamins, minerals, and a bunch of other healthy things. I don't even know what they are, but I know they're good for you. And when I wake up every single day now, I feel energized. My digestion has never been better, and I'm ready to attack each and every day because of Athletic Greens and AG1. So if you want to take ownership of your health like I am right now, try AG1 today at drinkag1.com slash next up, and you get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs when you go to my link tryag1.com slash next up and guys all of you who support this podcast you guys supporting our sponsors helps me a ton so please go support ag1 and support next up through the process and optimize your health and nutrition today drinkag1.com slash next up check it out next up we went straight to the top we got the mayor yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. the mayor you know he's, yeah, yeah. he's an alum you're shaking all the right hands. Yeah. <laughs> so, and his daughter is Joyce. You met Joyce next to Monica. Yeah. Yep. So that's that her dad's the mayor. Got it. So. Yeah. That's fun. Went all good with Mike. That's good. Oh, he was great. He's awesome. Yeah, we had a good conversation. How close he's you want a, this? 
I'm the wrong guy. <laughs> Raise yeah, it. Let's, let's get that. It looks like it's a little loose. Hold on. Let you control it. Yeah. There you go, man. Are we, uh, how are we doing, Ethan? Are we good? Yeah, you guys are good to start. Have you, have you done a bunch of podcasts? Is this a, a uh, reg- not regular? one that's like with cameras, but yeah, <laughs> this is the whole production. Like, right? This is this is the, <laughs> the whole deal right yeah. here. So no, I'm excited to talk to you. I've, I've been wanting to come out for a while and and love what you're building. And I appreciate you having us today. This is this has been cool. It was cool to see practice, but intense practice. It was I was. Uh, this is the time of camp I feel like where it all just kind of energy can be low right it kind of all uh it just mushes all together but it practice is pretty intense were you happy with it yeah it was uh I mean you know today was uh first day after having a day off so you expect it to be good and uh the challenge would be can you back it up again tomorrow and the day after and so uh you know it's the warmest practice we've had yeah you know the the weather this is the best place to ever practice football (laughs) I mean uh, last fall was uh from the beginning of August to you know, the end of November, really, uh, yeah. was the best football weather we've been a part of. So the guys have it pretty good, but uh, today was a little warmer. So yeah. I was proud of uh, how they handled them th- themselves and what it looked like out there today. Yeah, a little hotter than I was expecting, but it, but mm-hmm. it's not still it's still not too hot, right? No, it's still it's good. good. Yep. You can't complain. Uh, well, so much I want to talk to you about. You've had so much success in a, in a short time here, and, and a, what you build is, is super impressive. But I want to start here. Let's go back to – December 2021, when you walked in this team meeting room Mm -hmm. with your first meeting as the head coach of Washington, what was going through your mind when you walked through the door? Well, it happened so fast. I mean, you're, you know, coaching at Fresno State on Thanksgiving Day against San Jose, (laughs) and, you know, things really happen uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and, you know, by Monday morning, you're getting offered a job and (laughs) talking to your team, and that's an emotional piece on that end because I love that place. Yeah. uh, it was awesome, but uh, knew just this was too good of an opportunity. Um, was so fired up and uh, came up here and met with the team on that. Uh, I think it was a Monday night, and uh, just it was pretty easy to get a feel of how important being really good was to them, mm-hmm. and that there was a lot of really high character um, guys who cared a lot about each other um, as well as this program. And so I could even feel that in the room. You know, I had yeah. their attention, and you always do when it's your first day, right, uh, coming in as a <laughs> head coach. But pulled them off into little uh, kind of side pocket groups, um, you know, what we would probably now call our unity council, but a lot of the mm-hmm. leadership, guys in leadership roles, um, met with them and got a really good idea of what um, what it was that they were missing. And it wasn't, you know, it, it was just a few things. And I think we brought that to the table as a coaching staff, and, um, you know, that led to a great season yeah. last year. What made you believe there, there were a lot of jobs open at that time mm-hmm. in, on the West Coast? Uh, it, you had had success at, at a bunch of other stops. What made you believe that this was the right job to take and the right time to take it? There was a, just enough, um, you know, uh, people that I knew that had either been here and coached here, yeah. um, just enough contacts that. Uh, I understood kind of this place. I uh, coached here in 2017 mm-hmm. and saw what the environment was when I was at yeah. Fresno State as a coordinator. And uh, that was coming off of a 2016 mm-hmm. uh, you know, playoff run that they had yeah. here. And so uh, it was electric. Uh, we, we had a silent cadence, you know. <laughs> uh, it was loud. And, you know, there's just this whole focus on the dogs that Seattle has. Yeah. And it's a special community that way. Um, we do have an NFL team that does, a, you know, is awesome. Uh, Major League Baseball team, and you know now hockey's mm-hmm. doing well as well. But um, man, the dogs is what yeah. this place is all about. And so yeah. um, the focus there. And then I thought the bones of the program, just uh, with yeah. you know uh, ch- national championships and many mm-hmm. conference championships, Rose Bowl appearances. This place has that from within, and so you know that there's pride from alumni yeah. um, that uh, you know that really you know brought a lot to this program and that's been so much fun getting to know them yeah. over the last year take me through the whirlwind of when you take the job you mentioned it happened so fast when you take the job not only are you coming here and having to build your staff out which you obviously took a lot of guys with you but you're also having to recruit your own roster in the mm-hmm. time of the transport transfer portal you got to figure out who's on your who's who's committed to us who do we who do we want who do we who do we have to go after there's so much going on what was that first week like when you were on the job here yeah i'd say the first couple of weeks and then you know it just things change too and you, you learn a lot about the people that you have around you and you just appreciate appreciate them even more and yeah. um it was great having a foundation uh with 
you know, six coaches, strength coach, uh, got uh, Courtney Morgan's our director of player personnel, um, getting a lot of those pieces in place. Uh, there was some out, you know, a lot of positions still had to figure out, but, um, you know, just recruiting the roster part, you brought that up. Looking back on it, it's just, it was every, it was hour by hour sometimes, <laughs> you know, it's just, that's just how it was. Uh, Cause they, and, and you understand why they don't yeah. know who you are. Mm -hmm. um, and these are important decisions and this is a quarter school. And so mm -hmm. these guys got to figure out by January 3rd yeah. where they're going to school. So, you know, that Christmas break, uh, you know, there was a lot of phone calls, a lot of uh, even, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversations before, you know, mm -hmm. they left for Christmas break. But uh, we got through it and, uh, you know, for the most part retained, you know, our roster. Yeah. And again, that's a tribute to these guys and uh, how they felt about each other and the belief that they had and uh, wanting to accomplish it. Accomplish it. And then I, I give them and our staff credit for, you know, meeting each other in the middle. Yeah. And uh, trusting what was said, um, you know, and then, you know, January was a great month. I walked in this room uh, and it was dead quiet for that first meeting on January 3rd, <laughs> I think it was. And, you know, by Friday, yeah. the, the five days later, um, doing some workouts and it was a whole different vibe. You yeah. know, just here we go. You know, it felt like we were already, you know, five mm -hmm. months in. Yeah. And so uh, it's a tribute again to everyone involved, coaches and players. When you got here, what was the first thing that either surprised you or that you said, we have to change this or fix this right away as, as we get going here? Um, just that the guys never flinched. Yeah. I mean, we asked them to do something and they did it and then some. Um, yeah. That was really, there was not a really a lot of major things uh, it, that we had to fix. Just, you know, um, different schemes, offense, defense, special teams. Um, and they knew that that was going to happen, but they never flinched. And we were asking them to do a lot when it came to the training. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they've seen their bodies change and looking back on it. You know, I know they're really happy that they just went all in. Yeah. Um, but that's certainly a time, right, when you're you're doing different workouts and, you mm -hmm. know, kind of you could ask questions, but um, they never flinched. Yeah. You mentioned a little bit of we talked about why you took this job. The other part of it, too, is the commitment that you need from the administration mm -hmm. to build yeah. a program in today's college football with all the resources and the arms race and everything that goes into it. Tell me about those conversations with the administration of saying, are, are we committed to winning at the highest level? And does the commitment that the administration and, and everything that goes into it match the expectation that they have for, for you? Yeah, there's no question. Um, you know, our, our president, uh, President Kause, when I met with her, um, she expressed that, yeah. you know, and I could tell that what she uh, was saying uh, she meant. And um, she was uh, excited, anxious, whatever, to get, get football back going again. Um, you know, and that was really during my interview, but that's continued on throughout, mm -hmm. you know, my contact with her and her, my support uh, that I get from uh, President Kause is, is great. And then, um, you know, Jen, Jen uh, Cohen, um, just, I mean, she is as aggressive as they get, you know, mm -hmm. and this is a place she's been passionate about and worked at, uh, you yeah. know, for a long time. Uh, and, you know, this is home for her, you mm -hmm. know, and so, I mean, when you really look at it and um, man, she just keeps providing the resources and, you know, we'll go out there and, and help find what we need um, if there is anything that comes up and um, it's very solution oriented yeah. and understands that, you uh, you know, um, that as long as we have a plan and I can show her the why, why yeah, you know, yeah. um, she'll do everything she can to make it happen. Uh, I want to ask about the beginning of your career when you were the head coach at Sioux Falls and, and all the success you had there. How did that time at a program like that kind of develop your coaching philosophy and who you are today at a big time program like this? Mm -hmm. and, and how did that kind of mold you into who you are today? Yeah, I mean, I guess I was fortunate enough to, to play under a coach who really based his leadership style on loving his players, serving his players, yeah. um, Bob Young. And he just passed away in January, but that's really the mentor. And that's all I knew um, as a player. And then I coached for him for five years, took over for him when he retired. And, um, you know, I just loved coaching there. I mean, I really didn't feel like I needed to go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know if I understood what the levels were of football, <laughs> you know, and what it just took to get fun. there. <laughs> I just love coaching ball. And, yeah. and uh, then, you know, making that program going from good to great to, you know, mm -hmm. like a national powerhouse uh, was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And I uh, love those players, love that 
well, everything that happened there. But, you know, they're just – you kind of understand, uh, you know, there's other challenges. And, you know, the right one came up to leave in 2010 to go yeah. to Southern Illinois and, you know, kind of moved on from there. When you look back and, and think back to yourself during that time and then you being here today, how do you think you've changed the most from a philosophy standpoint, maybe it's strategy, just you as a coach in, those, in that time period? Hey guys, here's the reality. It is summertime. Summertime means more fun, more ladies, more time on the beach. And what's crucial during that time? You have to look good, top to bottom, literally. The way I make sure I'm looking good and fresh and light every day in the summer is with Manscaped. The Performance Package 4.0 has me feeling my best. Last time I was at the pool about two weeks ago, I had the shirt off, my face was clean, I was groomed well below, and my confidence was at an all-time high, and it paid dividends for me. Here's why I love the Performance Package 4.0. The Performance Package 4.0 has everything you could ever need to keep you looking your best. It comes with the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and even a travel bag to hold all your tools. Trust me, guys, you don't want to miss out on this bundle. So, guys, go to manscaped.com and use my code ADAMB for 20% off and free shipping to get what you need to be feeling good this summer. That's code ADAMB at manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping. And, guys, supporting the sponsors of this podcast like Manscaped helps support me and allows me to do this podcast every week for all of you. So, go to manscaped.com, use my code ADAMB for 20% off and free shipping. Mo a lot of it's the same. Yeah. Um, from leadership style, uh, it's very similar. And, uh, you know, just caring for the players, um, giving them one of the greatest experiences that uh, they could ever imagine, mm -hmm. um, you know, and developing um, a, just a unit to where uh, a team where, you know, they just love each other and they do it for yeah. each other. And that's, you know, why they go to work every day. Um, but, you know, offense, defense, I mean, this, the, the kind of what we do has evolved. Um, there's more coaches, there's more film to be able to watch. <laughs> more resources. We're, yeah, yeah, more resources, yeah. there's more of that. But, you know, we, we do a lot of shifting and motioning. Well, we were shifting yeah. and motioning a lot back in 2006, yeah. you know. <laughs> and so, um, you know, why we do it. And, you know, the one thing that is kind of nice, uh, there were some mistakes that I made too, mm. you know, back then. Um, and uh, when you can do it at a young age and it's not in the – Scope a uh, spotlight <laughs> yeah. of maybe, uh, you know, not just thousands, but uh, tens and hundreds of thousands <laughs> yeah. of fans and so forth. Um, you know, you learn from those and you remember those. Yeah. I feel like anyone who's reached the level that you're at, at some point you catch a break in your career. At some point something goes the right way and it, and it propels you along. What's, what's the moment that you called a break during your coaching career? Uh, I think there's been big, uh, at Sioux Falls, I mean, I think that's where the big wins, you know, yeah. where you came from behind to win a semifinal game and win a national championship, and then you did it again the next year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you win three national championships. I mean, people kind of take note. But <laughs> yeah. um, maybe a big game would have been uh, in 2009 beating North Dakota, who was yeah. a transitioning uh, FCS program, and uh, we were at Sioux Falls. and. Um, you know, that opened up doors and opportunities. And I think in the end, though, um, you know, you, you make your breaks by just, you know, getting to know people, enjoying the game, um, trying to help each other. And those relationships have really, you know, been ones that uh, have have brought more opportunities yeah. to to uh, myself, you yeah. know, in a lot of these cases. You, you mentioned a lot about loving your players and relationships when when, when someone asked for you to define your your culture here, your philo your coaching philosophy. Mm -hmm. How do you define it? Yeah, I mean, it, to me, the, the what we're trying to build is going to be player led, yeah. um, and so you know, helping them all feel comfortable with saying things uh, to each other, uh, the other guy not getting defensive, mm -hmm. and that you know includes coaches too, right? When coaches uh, are critical and demanding excellence out of you, um, you know, there's got to be a relationship piece that is so strong. Uh, to where they trust, right? They trust and, you know, the communication can happen. And those are the key ingredients to building a relationship. And mm -hmm. uh, those relationships happen. Um, and uh, coaches can do their job. Players trust, believe, um, and they put in the work. And so it's always around, it's always the people that you have around yeah. you um, that are going to have you go in one direction or the other. But, um, you know, our non-negotiables that we talk about is a family atmosphere. Um, and I know everyone talks about that, but I just think we're, we're super tight on, um, you know, we don't always get along, right? That's what a family does. But in the end, you yeah. love each other and you care about each other. Um, we have a high level of accountability. 
Mm -hmm. um, coaches to coaches, players to players, coaches and players for each other. And then um, I think there's a toughness that we're building. Yeah. You know, last year I thought as the season went along, we built a toughness uh, physically and mentally. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, these guys were training them in the off season uh, to be machines, you know, to, yeah. to where they can withstand uh, the grind of a season. But mentally, um, you know, we just do it, I think, as a staff, a pretty good job of putting them in a lot of situations that can translate and, and work forward thinking on, you know, this is what our response is going to be when adversity strikes. And yeah. so the last thing, just a one and all mindset, just literally everyone says it, but I think our guys really believe it, you know, flush, you know, learn from it, accept it, own it, whatever it was that just happened, flush it and then move on, play yeah. in the present. When it comes to building your roster here, you know, when I think about from an outsider's perspective, the recruiting strategy of being in Seattle. You know, you have the you have a lot of a lot of great players in the state mm -hmm. that you can try to keep home. You also probably have a need to go national at some positions and go find some guys all over the country. How do you? I guess what is your recruiting strategy mm -hmm. from a location, from just a, an overall messaging standpoint, and then how do you decide kind of keeping guys home when we go national from, from that standpoint? Yeah, I think it's evolving, um, and mm -hmm. it's going to continue to evolve with our transition Especially to now. the Big Ten. <laughs> yeah. um, but if you look at the dynamics of our staff, a lot of the staff came from Fresno, mm -hmm. um, but you know some of the staff had been there four years, five years. Uh, Ryan Grubb had been there five years, but. You know, a lot of them have been there four or even two had come with me uh, in 2020. And uh, there's a lot of relationships in the state of California, yeah. you know. And then uh, many of our staff are also from the Midwest. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at our roster right now, uh, we're working on those relationships with the, sit the, with the coaches in the state of Washington and mm -hmm. building them and gaining that trust in them. Um, but the West Coast is the footprint that has provided a lot, lot of success for UW uh, in those championship years, those big years. Um, so we kind of took that recipe um, but also, w when there was a contact, when there was a connection or has been a connection mm -hmm. out in the Midwest um, and a player we've identified that fits who we are and what we want to be, um, you know, those tie-ins, uh, we've, we've gone after those kids, mm -hmm. uh, especially at certain positions, you yeah. know, ones that are maybe harder to get in the, in the West Coast. Yeah. You just said if a kid fits who we want them to be, what, what is the ideal kid you're looking for? Well, I mean, it, it can be a lot of different ways. It's not necessarily like the, the family they come from or anything, yeah. you know, but it, it's, you know, I mean, guy who wants to work hard, guy who put himself, uh, you know, the team in front of himself, uh, um, you know, just, uh, you know, the, the right physical type, you know, yeah. depending on the position, um, you know, and just uh, the guys who, you know, really are going to entrust the coaches to, you know, be, help them be the best that they can be. Mm -hmm. You know, when you took this job, there was probably not a whole lot of, uh, you probably didn't have a manual for the transfer portal and NIL and how mm -hmm. to handle all that. My, my first, a couple of questions on that, but my first one is the transfer portal specifically and how it impacts uh, as someone who's trying to build or rebuild, whatever you want to phrase it, a, a program. How do you balance the need to win right away, which a lot of times means taking more transfer portal players, mm -hmm. versus winning in the long term, which a lot of times people would say means taking a, high, a, a class full of high school players. Mm -hmm. How do you balance that? Because that's a tough, that's a tough, yeah. you know, balance. And the expectation is to win now. I think uh, every program that has a new staff coming in is going to attack in a different way and I think there's no right or wrong I think it depends on the situation you're coming into mm -hmm. we had some good talent in this program and so we had some gaps and fillers that we need to bring in uh, with you know Mike coming in as a quarterback and a couple running backs that we brought in mm -hmm. a few other spots a linebacker with just some injuries that we were going through a year ago and um, you know the rest of the roster is kind of what we you know retained yeah. and um, I think you know, you hope that that's really what it is, is like for the most part, you do a good job recruiting. Um, and yeah. then when there is uh, a gap to fill in or you lose someone unexpectedly for whatever reason, yeah. um, the portal, portal, portal is available mm -hmm. uh, for you to bring someone in. So it kind of honestly reminds me a lot when I was in my small college days I mean, <laughs> yeah. where guys could transfer down yeah. Yeah. levels. And, you know, when there was a hole to fill, you know, you know, you yeah. found you found that guy and. And uh, you find ways, and I think you become kind of a master of connecting the roster that you currently have and yeah. helping them show that, hey, it's important to have open arms. Yeah. 
uh, with uh, the transfers that come in um, that, you know, have some humility to them and willing to, to buy into the culture yeah. that you have in your program. Yeah. You know, I just mentioned NIL and the portal, and there's so much talk now in college football about the good, the bad, what it really means, where things are headed, uh, the professionalization of the sport uh, just in general. What are your thoughts on just kind of the combination of the, of the portal with NIL, how it's affected the sport, the negatives of it, and then maybe like what the solution is for how to actually fix it moving forward? Well, I think everyone just wants some consistency, uh, regulations. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, to where we're all operating on the same, you know, on the same level with things. I mean, I understand that some programs are going to have more support, you know, from mm -hmm. an NIL standpoint and uh, be able to have more dollars available to, uh, to, you know, you had give out NIL opportunities, but I, I guess I'm talking about from a, the recruiting standpoint, like, you know, showing guys what yeah. you know you could have to offer here at UW or whatever the university is and so I think that consistency some relate regulations I know that's what you know you just want a fair shot yeah. you know you want to you want to be fighting in a, in, in a fair game so yeah. um yeah I mean I think that's the biggest thing because the state by state laws end up being changing right I believe Washington has some of the strictest NIL yeah. laws in the, yeah, in the country some, right yeah some state ethic laws that yeah. are pretty tight yeah. Yeah. yeah, it just makes it no level playing field at all there, yeah. uh, which, which certainly makes it tough. I, I want to ask about the big news right now has been obviously the move to the Big Ten. Um, I'm a Big Ten guy. I'm from the East Coast, so I'm yep. excited about it. I, I think it's a perfect fit. I think it's great for the conference and, and great for the school and just for West Coast football. What were your first thoughts when you were told by whoever it was from that, that the move was officially happening? Yeah, I mean, you, you say the job is changing uh, with NIL and the portal <laughs> yeah. and uh, everything. You know, this is a different job than I took uh, two, a year and a half ago, you know, because we're now going to a different conference as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I think Pac-12, first of all, I mean, we understand the history and the tradition and, you know, it's emotional. It's an emotional thing, mm -hmm. especially from our president and our athletic director who have been here so long mm -hmm. and understand uh, the, the great conference that it uh, has been the Pac-12. But um, I, I think that there comes a point where we had to do what we had to do to um, gain some stability, um, mm -hmm. give ourselves some direction. Uh, there was just a lot of questions also, not just from a financial standpoint that you were concerned about, but recruits asking, you know, what's what, going what's, what's to happen here? Yeah. What are you going to do? And, um, you know, that gets hard. You can hear the things that are being said to recruits by the questions <laughs> they ask you, yeah. you know, and you know you're up against that. But uh, I've always just kind of said that, uh, they need to trust that UW, um, not in an arrogant way, uh, in a conceited way, but that this is a different place. And mm -hmm. the city of Seattle is a great market. Um, we have a lot of tradition and history in this program. Uh, we have great academic, great academics. And so, you know, we're going to be wanted if things did fall apart and not mm -hmm. happen uh, in a way that we feel we can have the resources we need to be at a nationally, yeah. nationally relevant level. Mm -hmm. I love giving fans and and even myself an inside look at kind of the life of a head coach. So my my curious mind goes to during that process, how how do you find out that you're going to the Big Ten? Is it are you are you informed that whole time? Are you part of those conversations, or are you just getting a call from from your president or your AD saying, "Hey, by the way, it's yeah. coming out today. We're going to the Big Ten." Yeah, there there was. Uh, I, I mean, I, it happened. The ups and downs yeah, happened. It looked so, like it was happening, then didn't right. happen. So <laughs> it's not like you had much of a heads up because no yeah. one really had much of a heads up. So. Um, but yeah, Jen Cohen just let me know kind of the direction it was going and mm -hmm. um, that it wasn't official, but you know, the news was broke soon after that. So it wasn't like I knew and had insider <laughs> information uh, much yeah. more than anyone else. Yeah. How, how does the move to the Big Ten change the, you, you met, we talked about the recruiting strategy. Does it, does it change from a national perspective, the ability to go farther away from, from the West Coast and recruit, do you think? I think. Um, I think our footprint is still our footprint, yeah. but they're like you're getting to, I think there is, uh, you know, you are more open to, yeah. uh, pr you know, prospects uh, and, and feeling like, you know, cause in the end you can chase guys uh, that you think really like might be, you know, wanting to come to UW. Mm -hmm. And in the end they choose that school closer to home. Yeah. Um, now yeah. with us playing, you know, games out further east, um, you know, in the Midwest and in the East Coast or East time zone, um, you know, I think there's a, a better chance we do land those guys and that they feel great yeah. about, you know, UW being their home. Yeah. 
What's it like being a coach on your staff? Before we get back to the podcast, I'll tell you all about our newest sponsor of the Next Up podcast, Modern Mammals. You guys know I only want to promote and allow things to sponsor the podcast that I actually use. That's why I'm so fired up for Modern Mammals to be sponsoring the pod. Here's a story. About a year ago, I started noticing my hair was, wasn't feeling great, felt dry, just didn't feel super healthy. I did a bunch of research around what I was using and putting in my hair with shampoo and realized what I was using was terrible for my hair. Shampoo is not good for your hair. That's when I came across Modern Mammals. It's a replacement for shampoo. So you can wash your hair, clean out all the oils without damaging your hair like shampoo does. I now use Modern Mammals every day. After I work out, use Modern Mammals in the shower. No more shampoo, completely cut out of my life. And my hair has never felt healthier or looked better. At least that's what my mom and grandma told me. So it's time you get rid of shampoo and go to modernmammals.com. Use my promo code Adam B for free shipping at checkout. Get yourself some Modern Mammals today and get your hair healthier than it's ever been before. Modernmammals.com, promo code Adam B at checkout for free shipping. And guys, supporting my sponsors, supports the podcast, supports me, allows me to keep doing this. So please go support Modern Mammals at modernmammals.com, promo code Adam B. What's it like being a coach on your staff? Oh, you'd have, I hope it's one that they enjoy. I guess, I guess what, yeah. what would you hope they would say? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I, I feel it's important as a leader to give them the direction, give yeah. them the parameters to work within, um, understand the philosophy that we're going to have, not just with our coaching, uh, you know, and, and building relationships, but also the style of play. Mm -hmm. um, but then that they feel like, you know, if they put the work in and, and they own it, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to let them just go to work. Yeah. And uh, that's my, my philosophy all along is surround yourself with great people, people you entrust. And, uh, you know, I think even last year um, we had two losses uh, in a row after winning four straight mm -hmm. to be, start the season. And, you know, I think a lot of teams um, could have become divided, especially with a program that had only won four games the year before, yeah. you know, and, and uh, the, you know, hiring the right people and uh, just – the, the, the character of the the staff, you know, mm -hmm. and sticking together, I think, trickled down to our players. And, you know, we finished with seven straight wins. And yeah. so, um, you know, I just I hope, you know, they feel like as much as there is a possibility they can have a, a balance, you know, mm -hmm. with uh, work and life um, yeah. where you go at it hard. I mean, it's, you know, to be at the top, uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of time. Um, but, you know, their families are always welcome. They know that. And. You know, I hope that every day is, is one where they feel like um, they're growing and yeah. have an opportunity to, to do what they love to do. Yeah, I talked to a few other coaches about this, the, the balance and the need to, as a head coach, ultimately you're responsible for everything that happens, right? Mm -hmm. But you also don't want to be a micromanager who's like getting updates on everything. How do, you, do you, like, how do you flirt with that line of making sure you're on top of everything, but also letting your coaches, like you hired them for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. you, because you trust them, but you still got to be responsible for it at the end of the yeah. day. I think it goes back to, you know, just providing the plan, right? Yeah. Providing the owner, the, the organization, um, you know, what we want this to look like. And, um, there's been enough. Uh, our staff is unique in a way where I've worked with a lot of these coaches as an assistant coach with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've learned a lot of the things we like to do um, over the last 20 years together, mm -hmm. you know. And so um, yeah, it is very else. unique yeah. that way. And uh, they understand why our practice plan is a certain way or, you know, why we do a you know, certain thing on Thursday or Friday or Saturday. And because uh, we vetted it out, you know, as assistants, maybe at other places mm -hmm. and talked about it. But yeah. um, in the end, I just providing a plan. And I think that when they have that plan and that organization and then I try to give them the lines of communication to work, whether it's offense with offense or yeah. defense, you know, working and crossing over, um, you know, you provide those parameters and those uh, opportunities, um, you know, right people, yeah. they make the most of it. Yeah. I want to ask about Mike, Michael Penix Jr., who you've, you've had a long relationship with. We just talked about it with him for a half hour about just the ups and downs of his career mm -hmm. and how being here with you is kind of the whole thing coming full circle. What's that relationship mean to you, and, and how cool is it for you to have him here, kind of uh, obviously peaking in his career at the right time? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I mean, I'm just so proud of yeah. you know what he's doing right now, and um, just seeing him grow. Uh, you know, a couple of years where I didn't really talk with him because he's uh, mm -hmm. at Indiana in 2020, 2021, and it just uh, it's really cool to see you know what he 
went through and how he's responded and now where he's at today and just uh, probably a time in his life where it was just like, man, can anything go right? And mm-hmm. now it's, you know, the yeah. success of last year and this uh, this kind of understanding that, man, like I'm not taking this for granted. Yeah. Like, he doesn't take anything for granted. Yeah. And every day means something to him. And so, uh, you know, his growth as a football player, his understanding of the game, I mean, he and Ryan Grubb just, I mean, they dive into that film <laughs> and they do, they work so well together. Um, but, you know, his experiences that he's had in life, I think, are so indicative of his how he responds in a game as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When when it's tough and or even when he made a mistake or, yeah. you know, something was on him, man, he, he can own it. And he'll, uh, you know, just like we talk about one and oh, he yeah. literally does that to, you know, epitomizes that flushing it, moving on, playing in the present. Yeah. And uh, here we go, yeah. you know, and uh, just so proud of him. When you took this job, how important, you know, that, that process of getting him here and, and realizing we needed a quarterback and let's go get him. And, and how big was that when you got the job of, of actually going out and getting your quarterback and your guy that you knew? It, w- it was huge because I think, um, number one, we had a guy now that really knew our offensive yeah, system. That helps a lot, And right? that helped out <laughs> a lot. Uh, I think uh, it also helped in retaining some of our top talent that was on the team, yeah. not just at receiver, but I think other places too. And they all went and, you know, looked at his film or they remembered some of the highlights of him, you know, diving for the pylon. Yeah, uh, Indiana, yeah. yeah some of those big plays. Yeah. And, and they put two and two together. Like, oh, that's him, that's him. you know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and, and he did his homework in watching all the huddle films of the team and the mm-hmm. roster. And, he, I mean, it was a business trip when he came on his official yeah. visit. He he wanted to know. He told us he no interest in seeing the city. <laughs> <laughs> it was no fluff. It was no. It was. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was all about the the the, the core content of what was going to yeah. be important to winning. So, and then I think it went the other way too because now the receiving core, you know, and and other guys, uh, they're trying to figure out. Okay, do I enter the portal? And mm-hmm. you know, they're taking a look at the at the film of Mike. Yeah. And realizing, okay, this this guy's got it possibly something yeah. different to him and and uh you know hanging around seeing uh, at least for the spring you yeah. know what he has to offer uh, might be worth my yeah. my while i just talked to him as i said and, and he talked about the importance of becoming a leader now for him vocally and being the guy everyone looks to how have you seen him develop in that regard of kind of being the the vocal leader of the team yeah i mean he sits right here you know in team front meetings and, and front and center and <laughs> Um, you know, he has his way. Uh, and, and, you know, once he was – last year was harder because he wasn't even named the starting quarterback yeah. until week three yeah. probably. Hard to believe until you do it, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and so he, in a very respectful way, was, was certainly – passing on you know especially when it came to offense mm-hmm. you know and trying to get that right yeah. but I think when it comes to the whole team um, as the season went along last year he just really you know became mm-hmm. confident and, and the guys like you know like we, we believe in you like when yeah. you say something we're going to listen and this year it's just gone to a whole nother level yeah. I mean there's very few meetings there's very few practices uh there's really none uh where he's not coaching other guys up i mean i heard him on the field today talking to austin mack on things that mm-hmm. really you know you don't have to say what yeah. he said it just he's helping him out you know yeah. like the ownership the level of just like how he wants this thing looking mm-hmm. um and you know leaving a legacy here in this program um it means a lot to him yeah, yeah that's awesome um there's been we've been talking about college football and the state of college football i want to ask you if you could make one rule change in college football, what would it be? Oh. Well, I, I, these uh, clock rules from an offensive standpoint and the team that uh, I think is going to win, I wish we'd just stay with the games being longer. <laughs> right. uh, so that's a rule change I you wish wasn't plays, happening. You want but, more plays, uh, not less We want to get more chances to score <laughs> yeah. and, and give our chance a chance to win. But um, – I, I mean, I think you can go on a lot of little things just right. Like, you know, I understand why targeting right happens, but yeah. like just under, also when there's maybe a discrepancy yeah. and really if it was targeting or not, mm-hmm. a way for a suspension not to be carried over. And I know yeah. that there are some ways, but sometimes it's a, it's been a little bit harsh, but I know we're working on it as a, as a, 
as an organization, as a, an association, you know, yeah. to always make things better. Yeah. I was just on a, a Zoom meeting. I, I call games on TV in the fall. And one of the meetings, they said, our analysts need to know how the new clock rule change will mm -hmm. impact coaches' strategy in college football. And I started thinking, I'm like, I'm not sure it does impact strategy that much. But I want to ask you. The clock not stopping on first down, you just mentioned it. How does it impact offensive game planning and even defensive when, you know, when you're making your call sheet and you're, you're coming up with that? Does it impact things at all? No, I think obviously other than shortening the game and, yeah. um, you know, probably more of an emphasis on starting fast, yeah. you know. and few less and calls. If, <laughs> yes, less calls. And, yeah. you know, you, you can have a lead. And I, I can see that fourth quarter melting away pretty quickly on you yeah. uh, if you are in that kind of – position mm -hmm. where you're behind um, just watching a, a preseason NFL game and just kind of thinking about that the other night uh, you know went from 12 minutes to about five minutes really quick Fast. you know <laughs> yeah. so um, like that's probably really the biggest thing I don't yeah. know if it changes a lot with the game planning though yeah. yeah last few things I got for you coach I appreciate all your time especially during, during training great. camp um, what's a moment in your career where you overcame the most adversity um yeah, I mean, I think there's there's moments like that are happening in a game, yeah. right? Um, and I don't know if that's what you're looking for. I mean, I, I think where I've learned a lot is going back to, again, those Sioux Falls days where yeah. it's it's win or go home, yeah. you know? And, uh, um, you know, 2006, a semifinal game, 2007, I mean, there's drives that are happening mm -hmm. where you go 99 yards to win a game in bitter cold and into yeah. the wind and – you know, you out. just believe and like, what do you have? Like no regrets, just cut it loose and just yeah. play. Yeah. And I think that when you, when you live that way, like too, I mean, just, just go after it, just attack. Attack is one yeah. of my favorite words when it comes to just how you should approach each day, you know, attack the day and um, attack defenses, attack whatever it is yeah. that uh, it's coming your way. And, um, you know, don't, don't let negative thoughts just get into your head, you mm -hmm. know. And so I think those those moments probably, there were some big wins there that really influenced me, not just on how you should perceive and look at, you know, a game plan or the mm -hmm. the, the final minutes of a game. Um, mm -hmm. But, I, I you know, I, I just think there's a lot of learning moments I've had. You know, yeah. it might be how you, you get, go into a game and how – at one point you might have been nervous as a play caller back 20 years ago, you know, <laughs> yeah. and now you just realize, Hey, you're built for this. Like you're prepared for this. Yeah. And so I think it's not necessarily adversity, but it's learning moments that uh, get you into a spot where, Hey, I'm comfortable with yeah. uh, where we're at and just go cut it loose. Yeah. No regrets. What's the best piece of advice you've, you've ever received? I want to tell you all about our newest sponsor, Athletic Greens. And let me tell you, when I found out about this sponsor, I was fired up because I've been using Athletic Greens for years, and I want to promote to you guys the things I actually use. I love Athletic Greens. As a former Division I athlete, I've tried countless supplements, and recently, my nutrition and my health has become a bigger deal for me as I get farther away from my playing career. And let me tell you, Athletic Greens is the real deal, has me feeling healthy and energized every single day. Day. With as much as I'm on the road traveling, shooting podcasts, it's hard to have a healthy diet, hard to have healthy nutrition, hard for me to get my vitamins and minerals every single day. My doctor even told me that last time I saw him. But with Athletic Greens, I get 75 plus vitamins, minerals, and a bunch of other healthy things. I don't even know what they are, but I know they're good for you. And when I wake up every single day now, I feel energized. My digestion has never been better, and I'm ready to attack each and every day because of Athletic Greens and AG1. So if you want to take ownership of your health like I am right now, try AG1 today at drinkag1.com slash next up and you get a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs when you go to my link tryag1.com slash next up. And guys, all of you who support this podcast, you guys supporting our sponsors helps me a ton. So please go support AG1 and support next up through the process and optimize your health and nutrition today. Drinkag1.com slash next up. Check it out. What's the best piece of advice you've, you've ever received? Oh man, there's a, there's a lot, and I know I was asked this question the other day. I, th I think that um, it's it's a lot of the things that I'm talking that mm -hmm. I've kind of said over the course of this is just there's nothing that you can worry about. Don't worry about the things you can't control. Yeah, you know, and just I see players get eaten up by that when they l look into the reps too much, and um, <laughs> you know, I think probably the, I don't know if it's the best advice I've ever been told, but I think it's one of the best things I've ever done is just work where your feet are at. Yeah. Like just I, wherever I was yeah. at is just like everything was into that and yeah. and not worried about the next job. Like I never got into that in the first place, but that's 
led to where I'm at, I think, is by pouring into everything into that moment, that season, that job, um, those people. Yeah. And, um, you know, I guess I apply that now uh, when staff come walking in my office. Yeah. You know, it's you, you might be really busy, but just uh, just trying to drop everything you have going on and focusing solely on that situation because, you know, they might catch you in the hallway, but if they're walking in the office, it's probably pretty it's important. important to them. Yeah, yeah. And, and all the courage it took to come in there, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If this place in the next couple of years, or maybe even this year, is to, is to win a championship, win a national championship, what are maybe the one or two things that still need to happen in order to be able to get there? Yeah, I mean, I guess it, I've been a part again. I think there's – obviously major differences, but there's similarities to what it takes to win a championship and have been through quite a few of those years. And um, you, you got to catch some breaks along the way. You got to stay healthy or not have one position in particular yeah. where injuries apart. fall yeah. apart and hit yeah. you. Um, you got to win some close games. Mm -hmm. And I don't care how good you are, there's going to be a game or two that comes down to the wire mm -hmm. and to be able to pull through and, and win those close games. But um, I think – Right now, it's just not it, – it, we've done a great job, uh, but never taking anything for granted, mm -hmm. you know, and we are focusing on that a lot. Uh, we're learning from other people who maybe have taken it for granted. We're letting guys talk about situations they've been in where maybe something like that happened. Um, but just, again, focusing on now. And last year, I think we got through November because we focused only on that day, that week, yeah. you know, that game. We didn't get caught up in week two or week three or week four. Yeah. And that's the way it's going to be this year, too. I mean, our Wanted November is, yeah. is tough, but, you know, November ain't going to matter if we don't take care of <laughs> September. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a great point. Uh, take me through your daily routine as a head coach. Are you, a, are you an early riser? Are you a, you a 4 a.m. guy, 5 a.m. guy? Uh, not, what, what are you doing day four. to day? <laughs> Five? Uh, but, yeah, so, yeah, and then getting into, getting into work and just trying to – I'm always making sure that the staff meeting, for the most part, is ready to go. Yeah. We don't meet until the afternoon as a staff after practice, but making sure that's organized. And so uh, when I walk off the field, I can watch the film. Mm -hmm. um, and then just trying to you know, text, uh, text uh, or make contact with, uh, in whatever way I can, with recruits, donors, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, maybe friends or family in yeah. any way, knocking that out. Because once you get into the day, once you get – once you get going into, you know, special teams meetings, position meetings. <laughs> and I, I, I like to sit in really all the special teams meetings and then, you know, a position meeting um, yeah. in the morning there. And then all of a sudden we're on the field and, you know, the days, the days fly by, yeah. you know, once you get that going. So uh, practice and then we have the staff meeting. I'll try to watch the at least half the film and then sit in with the OD staff. Uh, yeah. There's other appointments that come up, but yeah. – you know, all, all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> knocking out those things either at night or in the morning yeah. um, are critical, I think, to getting the day off to a good start. Yeah. Last thing I have for you, what's your why? What's the reason that you grind every day, that you do what you do? What, what's the ultimate motivation behind it? Yeah, that? it's just to give these guys the experience I had when I was their age, um, yeah. playing college football and being part of a team, um, being led by a coach that poured everything into me, um, created – who I am today. Mm -hmm. um, I was not, I mean, I grew up in rural South Dakota, you know, um, probably football wasn't even a, a thought in my mind for many years that I, that's something I would get into. Yeah. Um, but that experience was so amazing and life changing. And uh, the relationships I have today because of my days playing football are what I want to give these guys. And yeah. so um, we have a staff full of coaches who, you know, share at least a part of that philosophy is part of theirs, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why they're here. And, uh, you know, I feel like, you know, we're building better men each and every day yeah. um, because of that philosophy. And, you know, 20, 10, 15, 20 years from now, I can't wait to see these guys and the families they have and talk about their careers and championships or whatever it might be, yeah. um, you know, because that's what I'm experiencing now with those guys yeah. 10, 15, cool. 20 years ago that I coached as well. So it's uh, that's my why. Yeah. I love it. Well, Coach, I appreciate your time. I'm excited to see what you do this season, and, and congrats on all the, all the success. And, again, thank you for having us out here. This, is, this has been great. I, lo I love what you're building. It's great to have you here. Thanks appreciate for coming. It. Thanks, Coach. That wasn't too, too hard, right? Was he oh, man, you do a great job. <laughs> you do a great job. You make it easy. You make it really easy.